Ukrainians as well are actually depicted in the film as being, if anything, more viciously anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic uh, than the Germans themselves. And this has to be, well, this is, uh, if I may say, uh, so incomplete and atypical as to be misleading. Uh, the Jews fought in the home army. The home army had a special unit devoted to aiding uh, Jews as best they could uh, during the war. And it was through the efforts of representatives of the home army that news was first brought out to the outside world about what was happening to Jews in occupied uh, It was the home army that carried the first reports that the Holocaust was uh, beginning in occupied territory. This is the context, the broader context, really very important to remember in terms of uh, understanding the history of the war correctly, that this film doesn't do a very good job. As a matter of fact, it uh, tries to airbrush history, and if I may say, kind of relativize German responsibility uh, for the outrages uh, against Jews and other uh, quote unquote inferior peoples uh, during the second world. Uh, anybody else want to come in on this? I only, this is your field, so I'm a film scholar and you're a historian. But in the last year, it seems to me I've read five book reviews of all of the material coming out of Eastern Europe, and that actually more people died in that area, although Americans tend to always focus on Europe, and uh, who died in Europe and France. And Germany, etc., and I guess the term they're using is bloodlands. Yes, yes. A well-known book by uh, Yale historian Timothy Snyder that came out a couple of years ago. Again, Americans tend to sort of see the Western Front of the war and the Eastern Front as somehow equal. And it wasn't that at all. Uh, about nine tenths of the casualties in the Second World War happened in the East as opposed to the West. There are reasons for this. It was in the East, not the West, that Hitler and the Nazis intended to conquer, establish their empire, and depopulate the area of the peoples they regarded as inferior or relegate the remainder to slavery. Uh, so the war in the East was a war of unbridled conquest and extermination that you did not have uh, in the West. And about 7 million people, uh, Jews and non-Jews alike, died in the areas that are now in Ukraine. 6 million people, Jews and non-Jews alike, in the territories of Poland. 30 million, uh, most of them civilians, in what we call the east of Europe. Uh, roughly 20 million subjects of the Soviet Union in those days. The war in the East was desperate, colossal, and vicious beyond any war in Europe. Um, to turn to how that plays out in the film, um, without giving anything away, I just want to point the audience to looking for the fact that when the Polish resistance um, groups that were following through the course of the story does their um, historically important deed in this movie, it's almost by accident um, and by virtue of action on the part of the, um, the a German character. Um, and I think that that's very telling of exactly what you're talking about. Um, another issue that um, came up was that initially the story of Victor that plays itself out after the point where you all are in watching the film, um, the, the story of Victor was originally set to be, um, to take place in France. Um, and partially in the United States. And the production conditions didn't allow for them to do it that way. And so there were last minute script changes that moved the plot um, to um, Poland. And they, you can see some of that in how it's flushed out or not flushed out. And that that was a real point of contention on the part of Polish audiences when the film was broadcast in Germany. There were protests from the Polish ambassador in Berlin um, saying it's an inaccurate portrayal of history and of the role of Jews. And, in um, the role of the, the um, Polish resistance in rescuing Jews, but also 
it feels like the whole terrain of Poland is an afterthought, that the Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia, Russia, those are all either visually important in how the film is filmed, or they're important in the plot, and that this is sort of an accident of film production conditions, which are fine for a TV miniseries about any old thing. We would never think of question it, but the, given the gravity of the subject matter, it, it matters for this particular film. Actually, one interesting detail, if I may add, my understanding is that when this film was shown on German television, it was shown in conjunction with a documentary that emphasized the role of Poles in saving Jews from the Second World War, which in itself seems to me a tacit sort of admission mm -hmm. that the history, in quotes, as, as portrayed in Our, our Mothers, Our Fathers, requires some correction for it, it needs to be balanced. Another point you mentioned relativism before, uh, the Russian liberators, and again, I don't want to spoil what goes on in part two, but um, the fact that they chose to include the, a rape, um, and we do know that the number of German women that were raped and impregnated um, when the Russians liberated Germany, um, and it took almost until the 1970s until they started, a few filmmakers made movies about that because it was just absolutely kept quiet. Anyone that had a child without a husband was, they, they enrolled them in school and just said, my husband died in the war. So it's interesting they include it, but hardly explain it. It's just something dropped into this movie. It's, it's, it's pointed out, I think, the mere fact of citing it to the minimal extent it is, that could be enough for German audience. They, they, they know what's... They, yes, I agree with that. The American audience oh, might true. not have totally understood the background or the context. Yeah, that, that kind of goes back to where we were earlier in the discussion, which is the idea of context. Uh, you know, I for one was, in the, in the second half of the movie, they will deal with the battle in Kursk. It's giving you nothing away to say that. Um, and we're so used to seeing it in our cinema, when we're seeing World War II movies, everything is about how terrible D-Day was. And no one's going to argue D-Day was pretty horrendous. Kursk was the largest uh, armored battle in history, uh, even to this day. It was vicious on a level that almost no, certainly no battle that we fought uh, in the West has ever faced. And yet it's one of those that is almost completely unknown to most people on this side of the Atlantic. They've never heard of it. And there was a part of me that was hoping to give a little bit more about that battle because clearly the German audience understands what it means to just simply say the word Kursk, the way we understand what it means to say the word d um, And so I, uh, that, I think, was a, one of those places where it might make it a little harder for an American audience to fully grasp how this film um, affects its audience, because we don't really understand fully um, the rape issue, things like that, which almost require us to be Germans, almost require us to come from that country in order to fully grasp what the subtext is uh, in, in a lot of this film. Um, I want to take just in the last couple of minutes to see if there are any questions out here in the audience, if anybody has something you'd like to bring up. Uh, go ahead. 